And just like that, we are liveish. We are about to speak. <laughs> we are back. <laughs> What's up we there? haven't yet spoken, but we might soon. <laughs> what's, uh, what's happening, everybody? We're back. We're back. Hey, Java, welcome Java, back Java. to Java Java Java, everybody. I'm uh, Terry, and with me as always is our Ryan and Kent. Say okay. hi, guys. What's up? Hi, guys. So, nothing happened today in Star Wars Land. Nope, not today. Nothing. Not today, nope. but this week. Nothing happened this week in Star Wars Land. No, not at all. Hey, what's up? How about that episode of Clone Wars? Oh, that was this week? Crap. That was this I week. Knew I I knew I forgot yeah. to do something. I uh, thought uh, we are still talking about last week's episode. <laughs> We've already uh, got a I thought we were, oh, yeah. oh, God. All already right. a res pretty respectable crowd in here. We've got a lot of familiar faces in here, some people that I don't know that I've seen before. There's Cameron. Hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> Hello, people. If you're here, uh, let us know. You guys are here. Let us know what part of the world you guys are from. We would love to know that. Oh, yeah, that's always cool. We would love to know if you are in our backyard outside or if you're on the other side of the planet. From and, Dagobah. I'm Dagobah. totally Dagobah. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody anybody's on Dagobah, they, I doubt they have very good Wi-Fi. <laughs> I don't know, man. You'd be surprised. <laughs> the force is strong with that world. Right? Yeah. Yoda, Yoda had some Skype that, calls in uh, Rebels. Is that another name for Wi-Fi, the force? Somebody's asking if you can put the lights on, Ryan. Um, oh. I thought about Ooh. it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with negative for tonight. I don't want to distract yeah. from this guy. This guy, he's on. Yeah, me. I actually can't see that guy. I'm, I've got you guys all squared off. I'll have to expand my uh, window. Uh, well, they they can see him. This is Maul. Oh, I see him now. I see him now. Okay, he's that's here. cool. Uh, yeah. they, they okay, see. well, um, let's get to it because I think there is a whole lot to unpack with this episode. Um, before we do, I'd like to go ahead and get a, get get out of the way our special segment um, that we do every week, Buy Me Toys. Uh, guys, start with you, Kent. Is, is there anything that you saw there that you uh, would love to see in a collectible and or toy format? Gotta gotta have all those Mandalorians. Uh, give me the horn helmets. Give me uh, the Mandalorians with uh, Bo-Katan. There's uh, there's definitely a lot of Siege of Mandalore figures that uh, could be pumped out. Mm. Uh, as far as we could definitely use the gunships. You can never go wrong with uh, gunships from the episode, but uh, those are the couple things that stick out with me. Are you still? Are you talking about the uh, what we mentioned? I think a week or two ago, a re-release of the Hasbro 3.75 inch. Uh... Yeah. Republic gunships for less than four hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, for less than four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. If uh, if they did uh, black series gunships, uh, that would be nuts. Yes. Oh, uh, like I think six inch. Be... Yeah, <laughs> six you're gonna need a desk the size of mine to hold that, man. That's gonna be just. <laughs> hey, massive. we're getting a snow speeder. Why not? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Jeff tiny. Simpson for joining the patrol. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that very much. Hey, Jeff Simpson, Absolutely. welcome aboard. Um. Yeah, it's it's uh I think Kent's on the money. Some Mandalorians, um, uh -huh. good or bad, would be pretty epic. Yeah. yeah, and some gunships. Um, what's her name? I I can never remember her name, but the uh, the new Mandalorian who uh, was come, who was brought in from the expanded universe, um, the one who's second in command to Gar Saxon, oh, Rook. Rook. Yes, Rook. Yeah, how could I forget that? That was my that was my chick magnet net handle in the sideshow freaks forum a long long time ago. It was. Um, I remember that. Do you remember that? I do. <laughs> I've been on that forum for a very long time. I do remember I that. I did not realize that you were that. Okay. Yeah, what was your, uh, what was your my name? Ori that? My original name was Noob Skywalker. Like way back. Yeah, I totally don't remember that, yeah, man. Well, but... I, I wouldn't remember me either. Um, but yeah, okay. that, uh, I changed it. So, uh, yeah, that's that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, but I, I'm with Kent. Some Mandalorians would be great. But I, was, uh, I also would love a Clone Wars Black Series Ahsoka. Because the one we have is from Rebels when she's older. I kind of want the, like yeah. the you know, yeah, the younger Ahsoka to go with that. I uh, would love to have that. And then, yeah, just what whatever they want to give us, I'm in. Uh, I just just I'll buy it all. I don't care if it's a Funko Pop, Clone Wars. Like we need piles of more of those for sure. And then mm -hmm. all like all of the Clone Commanders in Funko Pop form would be amazing. Uh, I'm just because yeah, I, all of it. I'll take it all. Just just make it. 
just make it. I think I'm still hanging with the idea of the Tano Trooper. Um, although I'm going to stick to my idea from last week that I'm going to actually try to make one of my own from um, the spare parts that I have laying around here. Um, I've got a I've got a veteran clone I can sacrifice and a spare helmet laying around that I can repaint uh, just for that purpose. It's really I'm sorry, veteran clone. I meant to say five hundred first. I think I've got like four of them, Ooh, but uh, so I can easily. Yeah, I can easily take one of those and cast it aside and um, th- cast that helmet aside and replace it with one from a veteran trooper and uh, Boom. make something awesome out of that. Excuse me. Yeah. But um, so, yeah, I think that's pretty much my only real one. Obviously, anything Tano related, I'm, I'm down for. Right. Uh, God. Yeah, I'm, it doesn't matter. Whatever you make got my tank. related, I'm in. I'm, I'm in. The, t- the tank Gar is here. Knight Sa- of Ren says a Gar Saxon, six inch and three and three quarter. Gar Saxon would be cool with the removable helmet. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, COVID. Cool That'd be cool. So, so um, the other thing I'm interested in is seeing a modification to the upcoming Hot Toys um, Darth Maul six scale figure. Um, Please, yes. Yes, I don't know. I just did a cursory inspection of the of the figure, the photos of the figure, and um, and compared it to Maul's costume in this episode. And I noticed that there were just very slight differences to the extent that maybe you can just pull off removing that more vainglorious tabard of his, the, the over tabard or whatever it is, the leather I thing. I so. And if you could just take that off and maybe replace the old Maul head with a younger Maul head, maybe say one of the portraits from the most recent release of Darth Maul from the exclusive with the speeder, then you'd have something there. Pretty much straight out of this episode. Yeah, that particular one scares me because of the. It's so poofy up top. <laughs> it's so poofy. It is poofy up top. And but that's scary. I just take it, that it takes away from the sleek. Like you watch him in this, he's sleek. He's not like over. He didn't like. I don't know. It just it's too big. It's too big. Yeah. Yeah. So. I hope so. uh, I've got it. I've got it on the way, so I'll experience. Well, it's not actually technically on the way. I'm yeah. not going to see it till the end of the year at the least. Probably not till next year. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's coming. I'll experiment with this. I'll, with it, I'll let you know. And who knows? Maybe since it is such an easy shift, maybe we'll get one of those from Hot Toys. Of course, that would open the door to them doing more Clone Wars stuff, right? Right. Yeah. We're not going to stop them from doing that. If they want to make that call, by all means, bring it on. Okay, gentlemen, should we move on to uh, this week's episode? Let's do it. The I mean, Phantom uh, Apprentice. Yeah. Let's Much go. more subdued intro this time, right? No glorious Wagnerian fanfare, um, you know, Lucas, George Lucas, I'm sorry, George Lucas, uh, John Williams' uh, glorious theme from the original films um, is absent, is notably absent. It's just the haunting Sith themes of Darth Maul overlaying the red Clone Wars logo. Um, talk about that. Well, right I'm, into the action. Right into the action, right? Yeah, that's it's, what it's, it was. They like, didn't want anything. not even like intermission bam. level. It was, yeah, it was classic it was Clone right Wars. Right back into the story. It was, it was classic Clone Wars. It was like, here's your title screen, boom, battle. I mean, that's that's what we expect. It was great. You think it's clearly, a, you think it's pretty clearly just a, a, it makes it kind of like on point that we're actually only going to see, we're, this is meant to be viewed as a single full-length movie, right? I think so. These four episodes? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, so yeah, getting into the meat and potatoes of it. I actually have notes here. I took a lot of notes. Um so, getting to the crux of it, the very beginning, we've got Ahsoka and Darth Maul meeting for the first time ever. Very high levels of tension. Um, Ahsoka's surrounded by multiple um, Mandalorians, with Darth Maul just clearly having the upper hand. He's totally chill, not caring about anything, doesn't have his weapon out. Uh, basically stalking Ahsoka like a nonchalant panther. Right. Um, not and- going as planned. No. No, not for uh, not for him, not for Ahsoka, not for anybody at this point. Uh, everybody's surprised to see everybody else there. Well, I guess Ahsoka was looking for Maul, but uh, he wasn't looking for her. He was looking for Kenobi. Oh, yeah. Kenobi, Kenobi and, his, and and Skywalker. Yeah, but he doesn't say that yet. No, he doesn't. Yeah. So, but what he does say is, you know, um, he mentions how the, she mentions how they've not yet met. Um, he mentions how they have a lot of familiar friends. They have a lot of the same friends. To which she replies, I really wouldn't put it that way. And his retort is, and I'm going to read this directly, I'm afraid your way of thinking is behind the times. Oh, yeah. So, 
He's alluding to something here. He's being very cryptic. Talk about that. What's he getting at? Well, I, he's you got to understand, Maul's been around from way back when, when Palpatine's mm-hmm. orchestrating all these things before the overthrow of the Republic. Well, before, obviously, we're at that point of the Republic. But way back when, he's been around, and he already knows the plans that Palpatine's going to throw out there. Uh, he knows what's going on on these other different systems and how widespread this, this plan is and how long it's been in the works. Mm-hmm. And Ahsoka knows nothing. Well, Operated from the shadows. She's completely in the dark. Knows nothing. And I think he's probably he's probably relishing in that too, don't you think? Oh yeah. I, I think he, he believes that because he has all this information, he has the upper hand. Right. And, and that's where he's he's up and if you look at that exchange, even when they had him they had him captive in the sewer, like back on the previous episode, and she's got her sabers out on him, he's just like he's just walking around monologuing. <laughs> He is yeah. no concern for her whatsoever about what's going on. Um, yeah, and that's bit arrogance, bit. and that's knowledge. It's arrogance from knowledge, I think. And um, yeah, it's very interesting to watch him interact. Ken, any insight into that? Nah, I mean the biggest thing is I would say besides who showed up, everything is going as Darth Maul planned. And because he feels like everything's going the way he planned, he says, not now, when uh, throws Rex into Ahsoka and makes his escape. Yeah. I think it's prob- now is probably just as good of a time as any, by the way, to bring up the fact that you were right, at least partially right, in your prediction last week. Uh, when you said that um, that you thought your thought was that Maul wanted to bring Kenobi there, not to kill him, but to battle uh, Sidious together to team up against Sidious. It's uh, it's nice being half it's, right. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> at that point, you want to be half right one time right. when we had metal legs. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, you want to be kind of right. I mean, you had the right idea for the plot for this episode. You just had the wrong Jedi. Which, by the way, is, an ep- is the title for an episode of The Clone Wars that you all should really see if you haven't seen it yet. It's really, really good. Um, but, yeah, you... Um, so, he wanted to... He wanted to bring Kenobi to um, ruin Palpatine's plans. He just wanted to do it by killing Skywalker. Right. He's got oh, a serious He uh, wound up picking up problem. your plan with Ahsoka. That's just, that's just marvelous to me that you got that right. I'm sorry, I just had to bring that up. But, that's because um, he, he's genius, man. Five points. Five by points. Five and a half points. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see if anybody else out there recognized that um, the echoes uh, when uh, when Maul was saying to Ahsoka, it's like pressing her, why did they send you here? Okay. Pretty much identical to the way that Luke was addressing Rey in The Last Jedi, right? So once again, we just have those familiar Star Wars echoes. That's because uh, Dave Filoni is a super genius. Plot points. Dave, Dave Filoni, total super fan. He is the chosen one. So to speak. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I very nearly broke my uh, my uh, Captain Cody legendary scale bus just now. If you do that, uh, I'll Don't be break very Cody. Sad. You want to you want to buy the pizzas off of me? Uh, hey, I would be very sad if you did that. Mm, cool. Cody okay. down. We've seen enough broken things this week. That's, we don't right. need, we don't need that. So, um, so after uh, after the after Maul makes his his escape. Um, fa- let's fast forward a little bit here to a uh, conversation with Obi Wan. Checking uh, in with Obi Wan. Yeah. Oh, Ahsoka and Obi Wan. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, they're having a hollow talk. They're having a Skype. They're doing um, what's that one that everybody's doing now for school? Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. They're having a Zoom meeting. By the um, way, their their projector got way upgraded. It's not only blue now. Now it's got color variants in it. Not only does it have color variants in it, but apparently they can recognize what's going on in the world around them as well. Right? Yeah, I, w- I was noticing that in the in the um, the Tracy and the the, the Trace and uh, what's her sister's name? Oh, Rafa. Rafa. Yeah, yeah. Rafa and Trace. Uh, when Maul was like her, like sensed Ahsoka through the through the Force through a hologram and walked over to the edge of the balcony and looked over the side to see if she was actually there, see what was there that he was triggering his. Uh, they've they've uh, they've upgraded to eight K. Uh, yeah, they've done something there, man. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm trying to. There's they're on a part. That, they're on that five G network now. <laughs> there's there's very much a part of me that wants to take exception to that and just say, okay, look, guys, you aren't thinking this one through. 
but I'm just willing to I'm just willing to push it aside and like let it exist as a storytelling device and how how cool it looks that hey hmm you know oh, but, but you I mean, saw Obi Wan and all that that it just it was yeah. great it was like he was there and they just threw like a blue filter on him it was that clear yeah <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, you're not I mean you're not kidding everything that we're talking about here is 100 percent true and I know that they didn't have that level of uh, technology in Empire Strikes Back because we saw. You know, well, I guess that uh, right. Vader was able to reach out to the Force and uh, choke Admiral Piet, and um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he says you're the Admiral I'm, now. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a bad way to get promoted, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, during this conversation with Kenobi, um, it becomes really apparent after he um, it becomes really apparent that he's not at all pleased with uh, with Anakin's decision to kill uh, Dooku. Um, he probably understands it to a certain extent. He just laments the loss of Dooku as a hostage. Right. Have any thoughts about that? The knowledge that would have led them to Sidious. Yep. I think there's two parts in there. One, the the Dooku and the Sidious knowledge he he went up, but I think he has seen Anakin going down, sliding down this path. I think he knows what's coming. Yep. He just, you think, he you think, the, you think Obi-Wan knows what's coming? Yeah, well, I'm saying their flags are everywhere. Go boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom. Uh, there's a problem here. And, it, you know, and the fact that the council sends Anakin to spy on his mentor, yeah. friend, whatever you want to call him, uh, mm -hmm. um, that was, yeah, he, he saw. Yeah, that's that was the key takeaway for me right there was that um, it you could really tell that um, for the first time it seemed like the Jedi actually had a clue. That something was up. I mean, they knew something was going on, but now this episode, a little bit of exposition there. Um, it just you just realize now that Obi Wan was a little bit more savvy yeah. to what was happening around him, and a little bit more cautious, and a little bit more apprehensive. I don't think we saw enough of that in Revenge of the Sith, so it's kind of no. it's kind of refreshing to see that, right? Another reason why Clone Wars made Obi Wan one of my favorite characters in all Star Wars. Just, yeah, I mean just. Yeah, before Clone Wars, Obi Wan was like, eh, "He's okay," but during Clone, yeah. War, you're like, yeah, "He he really became like a forefront favorite for me in this yeah. whole series." So, uh, I think he became my favorite in the prequel trilogy. He's maintained that, and it's only he's only been elevated since then. Um, there's a lot of other cool characters out there. I have way more Fett figures, for instance, than I have than I have Obi Wan figures, but that's more of a accident of what's been released than anything else. Sure. Um, <laughs> Later on in the conversation, um, he reveals the part, like you mentioned, the, like you mentioned, Ryan, he reveals the part about uh, the council sending Anakin to spy on the Chancellor. Um, Ahsoka reacts to that in with shock, disbelief, and a little bit of anger. Oh yeah, yeah. And to what Obi Wan actually says to her, interrupts her, and says, "The council isn't always right. That's why I'm asking for your help." At which time. Captain Rex comes back, Commander Rex by this point, yeah. comes back in and says, hey, uh, we need you. Um, and Obi-Wan has to let her go. Any thoughts on what she might have had to say? She right. wasn't going to defend the council, that's for sure. No, she wasn't going to do that at all. Definitely not. She, I think what he, he would have had her say, what, I, I've kind of toured around this. One of these would be one for her to kind of you know sometimes you got to do the hard thing kind of that conversation sometimes it just sucks you got to just do what you got to do right um and the uh, part of me go wants to say that maybe she would have talked him out of it out of spying on the chancellor yeah that she would have which said, wouldn't have been well, obi-wan's intent would have been quite the opposite of obi-wan's intent i'm just trying to understand what obi-wan thought he would be able to accomplish knowing ahsoka's position on the jedi council and their I don't want to say I, it's. I think it's too unkind to call the Jedi Council corrupt. I think that uh, to call them flawed is too yeah. broad a term. Um, but uh, she clearly has her doubts about the role of the Jedi and about uh, about how they've been acting. The, kind of gotten to the point where she actually thinks of them as kind of bad actors in the whole Clone Wars affair. They've been doing things all the all wrong. Um, well, acting like politically. It's like Rafa and uh, Trace. They're thinking the Jedi are causing all these problems and doing all these yeah. different things. And you know, Ahsoka clearly has been the the receiving end of some of that. Um, yeah. So it's the you know what what he exactly wanted her to you know say to him. I don't know, but she uh, clearly knew that it was a bad idea for Anakin to do that. 
Right. Yeah. 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 And, okay. And here's so, what the deal was: the Jedi Council was straight up using Anakin for whatever they wanted it done, and really with no regard to what how it was going to affect him. Yeah. I, he was just I a kind tool. of. I kind of feel like if if we would have been allowed to go into more depth with the whole Anakin storyline, um, if if this would have become a TV series, for instance, and been told in a serial fashion over the course of several hours worth of episodes, we would have had an opportunity to flush out Anakin's character a little bit more, and also the character of the Jedi Council as a whole, and maybe seen some of the potential for jealousy as a character flaw in a lot of the Jedi Masters on the Council. Uh, the reluctance to elevate Anakin to the rank of master, Boom. based on based on more than practical stuff. Also, the just like, eh, no, no, I don't, I'm not going to let this go to your head. Just a little bit more of a confirmation bias, sort of an issue. Right. I mean, he only got there because he was useful. Again, they were using him. That was. It's, he's sure. the most popular Jedi during the Clone Wars. Clearly, everybody, all the clones loved him. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. I'm, I'm I mean, really... if I was a if I was a army or a trooper guy like that, and I saw this guy doing flips, jumping off buildings, and just killing everybody, I'd, I'd like him too. <laughs> yeah, he, Side and he's, uh, he's borderline. There's there's an idol figure right there. Right? I mean, he's uh, he's almost he's um, he's he's already messiah like in his own way, and he just becomes sort of a messiah figure, almost like a godlike figure to these clones. Right. Uh, he's more than this just this general. He's obviously religious, has powers, and he's not very he's, nearly. He's a Hercules, figure. man. He's he's the guy you send out just to. Take out, take on the entire army alone. Yes, exactly. He's so, a damn demigod, you know. Yeah. So, true. Oh uh, well, then, um, then we find out uh, when Anakin gets pulled away because there's been an attack, and in the midst of the attack, Maul makes off with uh, Jesse, Arc Trooper Jesse, uh, one of the old school five oh first from back in Echo and Five's days, um, running with uh, the like. He used to run with the likes of um, of Tup yep. and Hardcase, you know, all the old school Umbaran group. Um, Back in God, was that was that season four? Uh, it's, yeah, it's been a yeah. I think it was th end of three or beginning. I think of it was yeah. Three, I'm pretty sure it was four. That's going back a ways. Yeah, but uh, so Jesse's been around for a long, long time, and that's why Maul picked him. So, any thoughts on uh, why it is that Maul picked him? Kit, uh, I mean, again, you want uh, he's trying to figure out what he can do now that he has Ahsoka and how Ahsoka is going to fit in his plan. So you grab the person you can that has the most knowledge about the person you're trying to uh, join your cause. Yes. Yeah. And find out what you have in common with that person that uh, you want to join your cause so you can manipulate them. Mm -hmm. It's all fact-finding. He's on a mission. Fact-finding. And, um, and Jesse's been around, of all the clones there, Jesse's been around the longest, apart from Rex, perhaps. Um, so he's got the the largest data bank to draw from. Yep. Um, I saw a couple things online where some people were talking about how um, they had other. Let's just say they had other theories. I don't want to get into too much detail, but it just seems like that's clearly the the only reason for it. I don't. I I think if you chose, to, if you wanted to believe there was a little bit more in depth reason for Maul to go for Jesse, whatever, that's fine. You just create your own fanfic in your head. But I but I think for the sake of this story, it's just because he had the most information to offer over the course of the simplest explanation. Yeah, he just wanted to know who Ahsoka Tano was. And yeah. if you get somebody right. who's hot, if you get somebody who's hot off of the <laughs> hot out of the clone tank, Ahsoka's been at, at this point gone from the Jedi Order for a, a year. Yeah, it's been at least it's been, a, it's been years. A while, yeah. You know, it's been a while. So yeah. yeah. So that's that was why he made that pick. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk about, <laughs> like I said, I've made a lot of notes. Um, I like to bring up the notion of all these powers that we first saw in the prequel trilogy, right? First, yeah, these first, these elevated force powers. Now I know that the, the elevated abilities that Sidious showed with the Darth, the Darth Sidious showed that the Emperor showed with uh, the force lightning, being able to take down an entire fleet out of the sky. You can explain that away by explaining that he had just sucked in all the power to power of a dyad in the force. Still don't know what that is, but okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll just let that go. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's for a another thing. episode. Yeah. That's been a unique thing. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's fine. Let that go. But what we see for the first time here since the, the force awakens is blaster bolt manipulation. 
Right. So, so far, to my knowledge, in Star Wars canon, there have only been two people who have been able to manipulate blaster bolts using the power of the Force, those being Kylo Ren and now Darth Maul can do it as well. And he's way more nonchalant about it. Oh, yeah. He doesn't even, like, have to hold it or anything. He's just like... Yeah. It's like... It's like, um, it's like Neo from The Matrix, man. He's just... Yes. That's a great analogy. I was just going to say Batman's had a ping pong ball, but Neo's much cooler, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, you know, he's got the sunglasses on. But, he, yeah, he, he, he totally just waves them off without even... I get from like uh, from the Force Awakens when we saw Kylo do that. That was just amazing because I, part of it was the sound uh, design they had with the blaster bolt flying and floating. Sure. In it. Yep, that was part of that. But you yeah. get the idea that he was Kylo was actually having to focus on that to make it happen, and Maul just like flicks him aside, just nothing. So I, it leads me to believe he was pretty freaking powerful at this time in the Force. Cameron, Cameron Taylor just brought up an inter interesting point. Darth Vader deflected blaster, blaster bolts in Empire Strikes Back. When? But, oh, with uh, at the dinner party. Hmm. Solo shooting at him. Do we all get minus five points for that? I, I clearly don't recall that. When he when they show up at the dinner dinner party, the door yeah, opens up. Darth then. Vader's there. Han pulls out a, his pistol and starts blasting away, and Vader just does doom doom, and then pulls the gun to him. Pew pew. Pew pew. I'm That's it. Blank. Minus wow. five points, I guess. I minus know. five points for me and Kent. Minus ten for you. I'm blank. <laughs> Captain Pops with the stay safe. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, that, Captain Pops. That's a valid point. I think I think the reason that didn't stand out for me was, and the reason I'm taking exception to the new ones is because everybody's just so. For me, it's like one thing to just block it, like okay, deflect it, deflect it. But the way that Maul did it, just being so damned and nonchalant, and the way that uh, Ren just grabbed the blaster bolt and held it in midair with his, uh, with his mind, while he's distracted, mind you. Right. I don't know. Well, we here's the the one thing we haven't seen since is the super speed from the Phantom Menace. We haven't seen that yet. That's I was I was wondering when when we're going to see the super speed thing again. Did uh, did Lucas just decide that was ridiculous and he didn't want to do it anymore? It would have been very helpful like later in that film. I kind I kind of like the super speed. I'm down with it. <laughs> I'm just. It would have been really helpful in Attack of the Clones when they're uh, like tied up and trying. You know, whatever. Super but speed. It would have came apart in handy from, later. Uh, apart no, from all rent. Maul clearly, uh, he's man. He's he's just uh, so much back knowledge and, and planning going on here because he's orchestrating his own plan. But I, I get the feeling. Uh, I guess we'll back up uh, one second here to his plans for wanting to bring Kenobi and his ultimate plan. And I thought, without reading the comics, Kent, I thought his entire plan was to kill Kenobi. I thought that was his life's mission. Uh, his like his destiny was to kill Kenobi. And uh, after reading the Sons of Dathomir four issue series, that is clearly not his mission. It might have been a side a side quest, but it was definitely not his mission at all. Yeah, at this point, he's ready to avenge uh, himself against Palpatine. Correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it, that's clearly his goal. If you guys haven't read the Sons of Dathomir four issue read, go check it out. I, I read it today. Oh, my iPad with me. Uh, on uh, Marvel Unlimited, it's a subscription service you can get through iTunes or Apple or whatever. Uh, but it's an app. It's Marvel Unlimited. It's like ten bucks a month, and you can read all the back issues: Star Wars, right. Marvel. I mean, like all of it, going back way back, all of it. Uh, so I literally signed up today. I read all four issues in twenty minutes, and I was like, "You've been wrong the whole time, you idiot! You should have read this a long time ago." <laughs> uh, and and I saw what Kent said last week. Um, and then we got confirmed with um, Almec in the prison, who Kent can talk about in a second. But um, the whole purpose of this thing is that is Maul is so angry at Palpatine for twofold. One, casting him to the side. Yeah. I think that's part of it. And then the second part of it, killing his mother, uh, would be the brother. second part of it. Um, and those two brother. combined brother. just... brother. Yeah, and his brother. I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. He, he's just, you know, he's got a he's got a legit claim to be angry with Palpatine. I think. Cameron brought up another interesting point. He's, he said his, he says that in Rogue One, Vader completely manipulated the bolts to go back at the rebels. At the very end. Yeah. 
Man, I totally don't recall that. Let me recall I don't remember that, that at all. I don't, I don't either. I mean, I remember him doing like the fourth grip and moving stuff and all that, but I, I, I don't. I know he was. I know he was uh, twirling his lightsaber and deflecting out a lot of blaster bolts that way, but I don't remember him using his uh, using the force to do it. I'll have to go back and watch it. I've watched so many times. Guys, talk about Kent. Talk. Tell me about the Mandalorian prison safety. You were bringing that up earlier. We've we've seen so much. uh, Go back, Clone Wars. Uh, We spent a lot of time in the Mandalorian prisons and. Seems like somebody's always getting broke out or, you know, a cell's yeah. open and somebody gets assassinated. And uh, it's uh, it's pretty uh, low-key prison system that uh, they're running there on Mandalore. Uh, maybe uh, maybe some of it uh, was the culture change and uh, you've had some different people in power. So easy access, but... Uh, I would not like to be detained in a Mandalorian uh, prison system. Especially not if you had, if somebody had it in for you. Exactly. Or if you held some information that might somebody might consider valuable and they didn't want to get out. Yeah, that's uh. Because they're gonna get there. Yeah, we've definitely seen some some things to make us believe that um, that's not the prison to be in. It's not, but, it's not like you have to worry about you know race riots or rape in the shower or anything like that. You just have to. Uh, Worry about people breaking in and killing you. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna to I'm gonna play this. Okay. All right, All right. So as he's walking through the scene, it, it happens in like five seconds. So hold on, I'm okay. not gonna play the audio because we'll get copyrighted. But whatever. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, that already uh, happened. Hold on, I gotta hit. I'm gonna go back. That's cool. Like That's now. cool. All right. Coming up now. Right here. Oh, hold on. Oh, snap. Right there. Oh, there it is. Wow, look at that. A little bounce back. All right, I plus saw, five I points saw that. to whoever called yeah. that. Cameron, plus five points to Cameron. Plus five points to Cameron. Um, Cameron, I, I would just like to say in my own defense that I did see that happen, but I interpreted it a completely different way. I thought the blaster bolt had been deflected from his lightsaber, and I thought he was just using a force push to knock those guys back. I did not see it that way, but now that you bring it up, yeah, spot on, man. Good, good, good high. I don't know if, I don't know if that's common knowledge, if that's just like, if that's just out there and everybody knows that but us. I, we've lost a lot uh, of points tonight. Of I don't want to see. <laughs> we man, lost. in my defense, I was just listening. I never said it. <laughs> what's the What's Supreme Leader? Uh, lots of toys to see, Supreme Leader. Uh, thanks you for joining the patrol. That's awesome. I don't remember yep. what I made it, but Supreme Leader is <laughs> like way up there. So, thank oh. you. Nice. Okay. Nice. Nice. Like, like they're in charge of the channel and we can take the well, rest of the night. They probably get, know more about we us because the uh, Cameron clearly <laughs> has watched and paid attention. And I think what he did actually, I think Cameron actually watched that scene in slow-mo. Because <laughs> in real God time, would have, that would have been really hard to catch. Or you've just got really, really fast eyes. You see faster than most people, like like Captain America. Oh, he's a Jedi. He's, he's a Jedi. That was, that was a good I call, think the other though. part that I was questioning was the was the fact that we've also we, I don't think we've seen the whole using the Force as a mind reading tool apart from Kylo Ren and Darth Maul as well. That was the, that was another one, but I don't yeah. I don't know that we need to get into that. It's just it's obvious that they're retconning some of these powers that re, were revealed first in um, the the sequel trilogy. Um, yeah. Um, Under the helmet. Quick, what's that? Under the helmet. While we're still in the prison, uh, Bo Katan. We definitely saw as she was getting kind of stressed by the turbo lift coming down on her. The uh, the old jetpack was working harder, so just kind of furthers the old uh, mm-hmm. something going on under the helmet. Little neuro. Uh, as yep. she was kind of being stressed and needed to stop that to save her life, you saw the machinery working harder on her back. Uh, for those just joining us, our special segment that we do every week under the helmet was the brainchild of Kent. Um, it's basically our means of uh, bringing to light some of the things that are, that are involved in Mandalorian, clone, stormtrooper helmets. Um, up until the point, this point in time, um, they've only ever really been illustrated as just being buckets. Um, just uh, right. costume pieces that go over the heads and protect you, just like uh, helmets in uh, World War II, um, Vietnam era, 
up until even today to a certain extent. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, that's just more to talk about right there. The um, the notion that um, that's brought up in the Mandalorian in the in the series of Mandalorian that uh, the as they call it the Rising Phoenix. Rising Phoenix listens to and obeys your commands. Um, that's a very mystical way of describing the fact that there's some sort of neurological interface going on, like you said. By the so, way, when you were out and about this past week with your uh, Mandalorian helmet, um, do, do you have that <laughs> functionality? What's that? Do you have that functionality with your Mandalorian helmet? I've got my Mandalorian helmet dialed, man. My Mandalorian helmet can spot COVID from uh, from 50 meters out. Nice, that's a wow. good tool. That's yeah. un- yeah. under the helmet exclusive, right there. Yeah, yeah. My Mandalorian <laughs> helmet de- detects COVID as a fog, and <laughs> wow. um, and, show- and and shows me the most direct paths to avoid it when I'm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I gotta get me one of those. That's awesome. <laughs> you really do, man, and only from Anovos. <laughs> wow. If I'm you wonder impressed. why it costs so much, now you know. <laughs> I'm super impressed as to that technology. I can see how it would be very helpful. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's in, pretty in, sick. In this day and age, yeah, it's the only way to go out. I, I don't recommend going out without a Mando helmet from another. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, stock. I didn't have to modify it in any way. It's... Oh man, that's. I'm funny. gonna get so. I'm gonna get in so much trouble. Becoming one with your helmet. Pretty good. There was an interesting part of the of this uh, of this episode where we and it's not and it's not the first and it's not the last socio political commentary we got out of this episode. And this episode was rife. With socio-political commentary, um, a lot of echoes of modern-day um, world affairs, um, American American political action, stuff like that. But one of the things that that I noticed that I think might be some sort of a hint of things to come. Uh, there was a bit where a lot of the clones were escorting some Mandalorian citizens across a bridge, mm-hmm. just to paint the scene, um, and this. This goes a long way towards testifying the quality of the animation that we're seeing in these new episodes uh, and how it's just a, the next level far beyond what we've seen in previous Clone Wars episodes. But just the furtive glances, that just evil death stares that these people were given to these clones as they were being marched across this bridge. And the clones doing nothing wrong, not being evil in any way, shape or form, but just being seen by them as being this occupying force. Um, they're not of the of this world. Therefore, what are you guys doing? They're, you're, they're looking at them basically as an invader at this exactly. point. Well, this the Mandalorians point. are a proud, uh, I won't say race, but a proud, well, at this point, a race, I guess. Um, and, and to a lot of them, Maul is their rightful ruler. They Yeah, they fought, well, Almec is their rightful ruler. Almec, Maul's yeah, that's... Well, I guess Maul. I don't know. Is he? Do they think um, Maul's in charge? I don't think. Yeah, that you're right. You're right. You're right. Maul was Le- Maul was kind of a shadow ruler, and <clears throat> and uh, Almec was definitely the figurehead. Okay. So, but, but for, regardless, for they didn't want to be under the rule of anybody but a Mandalorian, and clearly the clones were not Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's point. the confusing part. I mean, Almec, they should at least know that he was captured. So it's kind of like, why are y'all still here? Like. You you've already you've already overthrown our leader. Like what's still going on with this occupation? And of I don't think we they... have the the benefit of hindsight knowing that the clones aren't they ain't leaving. Right. They're gonna be there forever, essentially, until way in the future. I mean, the clones. Do we know that? Well, the, yeah, we got Empire. right now. I mean, um, at least at the end of the series, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we know that um, the we know what's happening next or it's coming up next, yeah. and. Now that uh, Palpatine's got a whole freaking army of clones sitting on Mandalore, um, we know the next events. He's not just going to say, okay, jump up and leave. I, I, he's just going to hold on to it. So. Um, I'd like to f- point out that uh, Chris Barcode and Sev Weber uh, just uh, just pointed out, I'm not sure if it was addressed at us or just in general, that Mandalorian is not a race, it's a creed. We know that Mandalorian is a creed in the time of the Mandalorian television series. We don't know if it's always been a creed. Right. Um, to, to this point, by all indications, in the Clone Wars time, for, time frame, in, in that particular point in time, Mandalore has, is a planet. Mandalorian, Mandalore has a people that are called Mandalorians. By, for, by all appearances, Mandalorian at this point in time while not necessarily a race, is certainly a nationality, if you will. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so to speak. Um, this whole notion of it being a creed, 
And my guess, and you guys can feel free to, to conflict with this if you like, my guess is that that happens after the purge. After so. Mandalorians are wiped out, at that point, they need to rebuild their way of life. They need to maintain their religion. Um, and they need to just maintain the idea of a Mandalorian. And the best way for them to develop that was to take in foundlings, people who are of other, who are of other species or of other nationalities from other worlds, and raise them with the Mandalorian philosophy. And at that point, I think, creed. when Mandalorian became a creed. Yeah, and at this point, they're not living in the sewers. They have no, all some of them, some of them well, were some hanging out. Some, some of them were hanging, hanging out, out down there with the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> but there, some With of them are, are living up. Well, some of them uh, are Toy, living Medic up point, Toy Medic points out, um, even at the time of Rebels, Mandalorians are still a people, um, even though they're in smaller numbers for whatever reason. That might have just been by necessity uh, due to the fact that they didn't quite have the uh, capability to flesh out a fully developed world at that point. Um, Maybe. Something's going to happen really soon between now and the pur and the Purge that devastates the vegetation on the planet and just makes it so that it's not quite so lush of a world as it is in this time period. I don't know what that is. but uh, Any probably... idea where the Darksaber is at this point? Yes, Maul has it. Yeah, it should be on uh, Dathomir. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the series. Uh, he has it. I'm sorry, in the comics, uh, he has it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't see him with it here. Yeah, my, my, I just assumed automatically that he uh, that he took that to Dathomir. I'm with you, Kent. I thought that I just decided he must have gone to Dathomir at some point. Or he has it hidden somewhere on oh, Mandalore. Yeah, maybe he's, maybe he's going to have to go back to Mandalore. Maybe. Hey, maybe it's got it. Maybe it's, uh, yeah, maybe it's got it. He's just got it stored away, and he's using his double saber deal, and I don't know, but... Yeah, I don't know. How about that? Let's let's talk about that double saber. Did you happen to notice the aesthetics of it? No. Um, it's back to being his original. It's it's the it's the broken part of his original lightsaber from the uh, Naboo battle. Nice. Yeah. And he, he the one it. with the well, that's the one from um, the previous film, uh, the solo film, the one with the little hooks on the side. And that's that's another one. Yeah. That's a so he had he had the lightsaber in Phantom Menace. And then he had uh, then he had the lightsaber that he acquired or built or whatever for um, for the earlier episodes of Clone Wars. But for this, for the first time, we're seeing him back with this double bladed lightsaber that is the original design, the original construction on the broken part of it. And there's a separate part; the repaired portion of it is all in black. Cameron is dropping knowledge here. Is that accurate? Also in Clone Wars, we constantly see them without helmets on, and Mando, it seems like the removal of helmet is forbidden. That's totally accurate. Well, I'm thinking about, he says it's the Saj's, Saj Ventress hilt. The side, the new side of the hilt was supposed to be Ventress hilt. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to go back and check it out. I don't know. Uh, Cameron, if you, if, you, uh, if you have time and the ability to type it out, um, an answer to us there, for us there, but uh, is, that, uh, is that from a comic book? Is that from... Um, Quote your source. That's all. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm dying need, to know. Because if there's sources. a story there, I need to know what it is. I've got the book. I've got the Saj Ventress book, but I've not read it yet. Uh, so I don't know yeah. what her story was. Did it happen there? I, I, if that happened, if that is a Saj Ventress's hilt, I'm really excited about it, and I want to read that story. Did you notice, um, and and somebody else posted in the chat and made me think of this, uh, since we're going, we got we got to think that in the... Next episode, we've got to be going into Order 66, right? We've got to be going there. Oh, do we or, have to, though? I mean, or do you I, think I, we're going to be one more this, episode before that? Okay, this, this picks up where we left off with the whole bridge conversation. Um, tough to tell. Or do we not get it at all? We're just going to see it in the film. I think there's a potential, and maybe not, but there might be a potential for some sort of an uprising by the Mandalorian people against the clone occupation. Um, but maybe... Maybe we're getting close to that time period. Time period when the Order sixty six thing may need to come down. Well, the reason I ask is because of um, if you remember in Rebels, um, uh, Rex has a, a, he was on the little ATTE walker that they modded to catch things. Yeah, uh, yeah. and he he marks out that he he's got the scar from where he removed his inhibitor chip. He talks about it in that episode of Rebels when uh, he meets Ahsoka and uh, they have a little thing. Um, That's what we're talking about, yeah. And then in this episode, he doesn't have that scar yet, so he clearly has the inhibitor chip in him. And yes. I'm wondering how close to Order 66 we get. Is it that he is able to withstand that 
is his broken or does he have it removed or how does all that work? I'm curious how that's going to flesh out with. I I have a thought on that. I think they, I think they have a valuable see, prisoner. I think we're going to see a bit where he has Ahsoka dead to rights during Order 66, and he struggles with it internally um, to the point that it nearly breaks him. Maybe I don't know. I'm just expounding a little bit too much here, but the long and the short of it is that I think that Rex is going to have Ahsoka dead to rights. He's going to fight it successfully and rapidly have removed the chip from himself. I don't know. You heard it uh, here first. Predictions. Yeah. yeah. We shall see. That's, that's, the, that's the quick, that's the quick and dirty version. Yeah. Uh, in the other version, they're going to talk to Maul uh, sometime next episode. And Maul is going to tell Rex Ooh. that, uh, that this is a thing. Interesting. And he's going to put it together because of what happened to um, Fives. Right. Well, he, and well, he yeah. Maul clearly knows what about them. I, I would think. Yeah, he, he's Jesse about it. How about that, that's interesting? That's interesting. Um, yeah. I'm curious. I want to see what happens with that. I'm. I'm, I'm there's so many different ways to tell that story that, yeah. to make that happen. Let I'm, me I'll call be really Filoni and ask him what he did. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Get him on speed dial, will you? <laughs> hey, Dave. What happens with Rex? We want to know. Just uh, don't tell me you want to talk about Star Wars. Tell me you want to talk about wolves. That's oh. usually how I start the conversation, and then we kind of move into Star Wars. Oh, he said he's busy right now. I'll call him back later. All right, well, I'll try that. Then. Uh, From Flex AJ Knight, um, he says that getting getting back to Darth Maul's uh, saber hilt. Uh, the hilt was supposed to be hers, As Asajj Ventress's, in the Dark Disciple arc that we never got, since the Clone Wars at the time was canceled, and we got that story in a book. They gave her that. They gave that design then to Maul. So essentially, it's not that he's actually using the a, a saber that used to belong to Asajj Ventress. The design was meant to be for Asajj Ventress, and they took that and added it to his Naboo hilt, ah. the Phantom Menace era hilt. To uh, that was the design. They just took a t took an unused design from an unused episode, deleted scene, what have you, yeah. and applied that to Darth Maul. So. That makes so sense. If that's so, if Plus I'm reading this accurately, and correct me if I'm wrong. Then, uh, yeah, between Flex AJ Knight and uh, and Cameron, we've yeah. got it that um, it seems like the hilt, the design was Asajj Ventress's, but it was never actually used until this episode. So, am I getting that right? Let that's me know. I'm, if I'm that's right. what I'm reading. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, cool. So, uh, I yeah, think Maul's going to escape cool. during Order sixty six with Ahsoka. I I don't think I think Maul and Ahsoka are done. Till rebels, till rebels. I think they're. I think they're meet. Yeah, I uh, think until the, the Ahsoka is... book, they're done. I kind of hope that Maul and Ahsoka are not done. They've got Maul in custody. That guy just keeps. He's a slipper. He's slippery as an octopus, man. He's able to get out of anything. So yeah. maybe he'll have something more to offer. Okay. Yeah, all right. Cameron. Cameron just confirmed that. Yeah, it was just the concept design of the Ventress Hill, which is really cool. You know me and my focus on. Y'all know me and my focus on concept art. I love it so much. Got a whole library of that stuff. Yeah, um, I think uh, I think Ahs where's Ahsoka going next? That's the question. She's getting on a ship, and she's heading off somewhere. Um, and she's clearly not going. Sky's to Coruscant. the limit, baby. <laughs> sky's the limit. I mean, who knows? We that it can't be the end of Ahsoka for us at this point. Yeah. Um, we're going to see more with her. Is she is she flying off to try to find Anakin? Is try she to call, head... try to call Anakin and no answer? He's not answering Zoom. Got a bad signal, so she's going to track him down? Huh. I don't know. Mm. Lyle Rockwell. What's up, dude? I love that tune that you posted to Facebook today, by the way, man. That was on point. That was good stuff. I'd like to hear more. Um, Lyle, Lyle Rockwell says, Ahsoka will escape Order 66, aided by Asajj Ventress. Man, I wish that were true. I would love that <laughs> so much. That would be how much I love me some Ventress. Um, I'd, I'd the be thing okay of it is, seeing we, Asajj Ventress again. I'd be okay with that. Uh, yeah, the thing of it is, we, it, everybody's thinking that we're not going to see Ventress because we never saw her in right um, in the uh, in the trailer. Right? What if that's just the big damned Easter egg? Mm -hmm. What if that's it? <laughs> what, know, what if they I just do know decide? who we're not going to see again as Dooku <laughs> or Anakin? We're, we're yeah, or yeah, we're not going to see yeah. You don't think we'll see Anakin I'll again? Nah, if we, well. I'll be surprised if we see Obi Wan again at this point. It's gonna be close. So it's gonna be all clones, and wh where are we going next? We got two more episodes. I mean, my guess to wrap it up, you get your similar Revenge of the Sith ending, but with Soko, Ahsoka and Rex kind of talking about going into hiding and how 
you know, they're going to escape. I'd like to interrupt our speculation for a little bit to bring up another comment from one of our regular uh, viewers, Insane Goon. Um, did you guys know that the girl who did Ahsoka's motion capture was Lauren Mary Kim? I did actually check up on that, yeah. And she's done some really, really cool stuff. But what I didn't know that she did is she did the armorer fight scene in Mandalorian. Oh. I didn't know so that. The, we didn't even yeah. talk about the motion capture. Oh, yeah. I was coming to that. We haven't talked to the fight yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess we can skip ahead. It's actually getting kind of late in the in the show right now. Um, so we'll have to skip over the uh, some of the finer points that I wanted to talk about. But... Um, uh, I guess we can just move on to the battle. This, th Ryan, this is where you shine, man. You love talking about action. I do like action. <laughs> I love it. All right, so um, at the end of the episode, in the credits, you see in there, uh, If I took a photo of it. Let me tell you exactly what it says. Hold on, hold All on. Right. Because I, I, I took a screenshot of it, so I wouldn't mess it up. It says, um, Ahsoka Tano performance, uh, uh, Lauren, and then mall performance Ray Park. So if you yes. if you go back a, after you, I mean you watched it, it was awesome. But then you go back and you, and you recognize Ray Park, and you, you kind of visually flash back to Phantom Menace. Um, uh -huh. You one hundred percent see Ray Park and the Phantom Menace using similar moves in this fight. One hundred percent. And yes. the fact that they did motion capture for it, and they took the time and energy and the expense, because I imagine the expense to do that was way more than just animating the thing. Um, I think so. And the, the fact that they actually took the, the time to do that, knowing it was such a pivotal um, scene, battle, fight, whatever you want to call it, um, it was freaking beautiful. Beautiful, but if you go back and watch uh, the fight scene between uh, Qui Gon and and, um, and uh, Maul, and then watch the the two the uh, Maul and Ahsoka, he uses very similar moves, and I think that's oh, on purpose. Yeah. yeah, he's got a very well. He's he's using his his wu, all that wushu training of his. I'm guessing, um, and uh, so obviously the forms are going to appear similar, if not identical. Uh, the only thing that changes there is his time, and he clearly has everything that he had before. Oh, yeah, so, clearly. He is not lacking in... He might be more sore after doing it, but he clearly can still do it. <laughs> Night, of Ren, Night of Ren 789 puts it best. Ray Park is a beast. No joke. He's he a savage beast. beast. It, was, it was gorgeous. But the uh, again, we're going back to like the animation quality of this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't dare say it. This fight and the animation was better than the live action one. Yeah. It was gorgeous. Yeah, um, I mean, Ahsoka's yeah, got her double blades going on here. Um, she's like using force capture and blood, and just it's, I don't know what to tell you. It was it was one hundred percent. It was a master class in fighting uh, style. It was beautiful. I loved it. I'd watch that scene. I, alert. I probably went back and watched this scene fifteen or twenty times. Just kept rewinding that. It was, yeah, gorgeous. Spoiler alert! Fun. Spoiler alert! Cameron Taylor says the Dooku kills Ventress on Christophsis. Is that in the book? I'm scanning. Uh, what? Yeah, she was killed by Dooku. Dooku is now dead. She must be dead too. Um, I think I, I think I, I think somebody might have just ruined the ending of my of the book that I haven't read yet. Um, well, not ruined it, but uh, spoiled it. I'm sure, it's still pretty good. That's fine. Uh, I don't know. That's fine. I'm I ain't mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh. Wikipedia. I got to get to the end. It's you very never use Wiki you don't use Wikipedia for a term paper, boys and girls. It's not a reliable. It's not a valid source. <laughs> Who has term papers anymore? Clearly not us, because we're losing all kinds of points. Uh, Knight of Ren seven eighty nine agree says that the Ahsoka versus Maul fight was one of the best lightsaber battles in Star Wars. I think that's indisputable. Um, although the uh, the final fight between Anakin and Obi Wan still holds the crown for me, uh, and I still love the fight between um, oh between Maul and um, Pre Vizsla. Oh, okay. uh, that was that oh, was really one of the yeah, yeah, yeah. that was really a standout for me. Um, yeah, oh, Pre Vizsla. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. I like that fight. 
I mean, there's a, there's a wealth of uh, really great lightsaber duels. I've got to be honest. I like every lightsaber battle between um, between uh, Kylo Ren and uh, and Rey. Every one of them. Man. It's a it's a completely different style of fighting that everybody seems to think is um, is somehow inferior. It's just uh, it's just more Western. I, I feel like it's just more Western in origin than uh, than Eastern. And uh, you're dealing with uh, two people who never had the um, the experience, the training with the Jedi to be able to pull off that kind of uh, fight style that we saw in the prequel trilogy. That's Those were Jedi at the height of their powers. Uh, True story. Much more brutal watching the... I'm not finding it. I don't, I'm not finding the death of a, of Sasaj Ventures anywhere yeah. here. Uh, of course, it might just be there's so much text here that I'm having a hard time finding it. But Cameron, we're not mad at you, dude. That's, that's, all, that's all good. It's um, probably there. I just... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, well, we'll see. I'll have to. Well, I still haven't read the book, so uh, I'll, I'll get around to it and we'll find out. Uh... Oh, hey, Josh, this is still live, dude. What are you talking about? <laughs> Pence. Yeah, you're not too late, man. Yeah, Josh Pence oh, is here. Oh, well, he. I invited them to join us, but he hasn't watched any of the Clone Wars yet. Oh, join us, join us. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, he hasn't watched any of the season yet because he wanted to binge watch the whole thing. Totally fine. And I completely understand that. So can, yeah, can we? We've had, we've had a couple of potential guests who haven't seen any Clone Wars whatsoever. So uh, that's yeah. why I'm out out of that. I, when when I we're done have, with the whole series, he's going to binge it and join us, and we'll talk about it. So I actually have a, somebody something that occurred to me that I'm going to try to get us. I'm going to try to get somebody on here. Maybe not on here, but on another one of your live streams. Ryan is mm -hmm. um, is a friend of mine. I'm not going to drop his name right now, but uh, okay. I'll but, look uh, forward yeah, to. Another, there's another toy hunter that I've been friends with for years, and I was like, I wonder what he's up to. I bet he'd be on the show. I look forward to meeting. Uh, okay, too. well, so so we've got we've got. Um, I think we got a pretty good handle on Clone Wars. Uh, I loved how that whole that whole bit when uh, just before we go, I just want to point out that one of the one of the stands for me for the fight wasn't apart from just the glorious uh, choreography and the mo the mocap that was involved by those two talented um, stunt people was the part where they pause. And Maul screams at Ahsoka, we could have destroyed Sidious. And she hits him back with, only for you to take his place. Exactly. Did that not tonally just sound like you were supposed to destroy the Sith, not join them with the, the banter between Anakin and Obi-Wan in the final fight in Revenge oh, of the yeah. Sith. It just felt like they were just locked together. The two, the two, the two duels are just totally very, very similar to me. Um, anyway, it was I, I, I that's leading well, to that. prior to that, uh, Ahsoka wanted to uh, maybe join up with Maul until he uh, dropped all the Anakin knowledge and pissed her off. Yeah, she was, was considering so, it. I think it was. It was so close. She, if if he would have given her any other answer besides enemy. the one, mm -hmm. if he had, if he had told her anything but the truth, <laughs> then right. it might have gone the other way. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, you know, they had a nice epic fight going on. Uh, I, I'm excited to see where we're going next week. You, Terry seems to think that, or at least I'm, my, I'm going to throw this up. You seem to think that Order 66 will not be in the next episode. You think they'll postpone it? I think, uh, I think the last episode is going to be. To be Order entirely 66. honest, I would need more time to think about it. But it seems like to me like Order 66 would be, if not the, if not in the last episode, than the very ending of next episode. I can see that. Yeah, we can't lead next episode. There's too much that has to be taken care of, too much that has to be wrapped up. Right. Uh, so we can't lead with Order 66 in the next episode. Um, yeah, it's going to be so complex. Do I don't have any predictions, everybody. I have no idea what's going <laughs> on. No, we have no, we're just making it up as we go along. Yeah. Other uh, than the fact that I'm, if, if the past two episodes have been any indication, then we are promised some really glorious Star Wars over the course of the next couple can, of weeks. Can I make a request to Lucas Films, who clearly is watching this, and Dave, you guys? Are is it there. is it for free coffee? Uh, no, but that would be awesome. <laughs> um, can you just can? Uh, and this might have been a plan all along, but I'm just using my Force ability and the 5G Wi-Fi I got. Um, yes. <clears throat> is can you just take the last four episodes of this arc and just put them together and throw them in a the movie theater? That's all I'm saying. I think a lot of people want that. I think a lot of people are assuming that it's already a done deal. I will pay for it and surround epicness and IMAX. I will, I'm, I will do, if you're with me on that, I will, in the chat, I will brave COVID for that shit. I will, I will <laughs> definitely, I don't know if we'll ever, ever be in a movie theater in the near future, but when we are, I want that to be there. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Hmm. 
Okay, um, I think that just about wraps up this episode of Java Java Java. Um, I got unless you guys things. want to talk, what's that? I got two things. Yeah, two things. Okay, two things. Two things. One. Two episodes left. One. Uh, one. This week, I, I should have thrown this on the buy me toys thing. This week, Hot Toys dropped the Scout Trooper and Speeder Bike from Mandalorian. Yeah, they right? did. did. Yeah. We'll talk about that on another Hot Toys show. But ordered the, it. Yeah. But the the second thing I wanted to bring up was. Mandalorian behind the scenes episodes coming up very soon. Oh yeah, yeah, that's hot, right? Right. I can't yeah. wait, man. I'm so psyched. If you guys a, haven't a heard great about time this, to be a Star Wars enthusiast. If just... you guys have not heard about this, um, Disney is gifting us with the glory of a new series. A documentary series behind the scenes of the Mandalorian, and it sounds like it's actually going to be even longer than the actual episodes themselves were. They're really going to go in depth on this stuff. Uh, eight episodes long—that's one episode per episode of the Mandalorian—and it's just really, really, really going to be something. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be beautiful. I can't yeah. wait. That starts on May the fourth. By the way, I was at Trader Joe's tonight, and I straight—I'm going to post these things to my uh, to my Facebook page uh, after we get done here. But I straight up have photos. Um. I was looking at produce, and the expiration dates on one, two, three, four different varieties of lettuce. May the full place and and broccoli florets as well. Was is tonight? As one assumes that it's all still there. May the fourth. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel it, so. When, maybe that's a is, clue. When is the fourth? Hold on. When is yeah. the fourth? Is it like it's a Monday? It's a Monday. Uh, that's a week tomorrow. All right, so I'm gonna throw this out there. Um, it's it's. Ooh, hold on, where is that? Uh, Cameron, it's, hold it's on. Next month. Cameron, it's, hold off on revealing those uh, those episode names, please. Yeah, it's so it's next Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, should we move Java 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 to next Monday night instead of Sunday night to celebrate May the Fourth? Uh, yeah, I think I'm down with that. Schedule wise. Yeah. Um. And maybe we'll do like a May the 4th. Maybe I'll pile up some giveaways for May the 4th, and we'll just have a Star Wars fun time. Party. And really? uh, <clears throat> maybe, yeah. I'll, uh, maybe I'll contact some of my friends for some giveaways and, and uh, Star Wars-related stuff. Let's make it a big show. Make it a show. And maybe uh, I'll get we'll some invite away. several other people to come here and talk Clone Wars and whatever else we want to talk about. So. Maybe okay, yeah. They're they're asking about our thoughts on the Dryden Voss cameo. Obviously, I, we all think it's awesome. Um, but Kent, I are you a, are you a fan of the Solo movie? You saw it, right? Uh, I actually went back and watched Solo today just because ah. of that cameo. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, very <laughs> cool. I mean, obviously, it's just it's it's uh, not much more than just an Easter egg. Um, but uh, Easter eggs can sometimes really bring a smile to my face. Right, and yep. that, def that definitely did. It was nice to see Dryden back. A lot of people thought that that was Prince Gizor, um on the left, but it is not. It is, in fact, the leader of Black Sun, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, I thought I had it written down, but I do not. I think I wrote it in my phone, and I'm not going to look it up there. <laughs> yeah. um, so, as then, Seb, course, Seb is I... asking, Seb's asking when's the next six-scale skirmish. I have no idea. Yeah, we don't have any idea. We're just kind of throwing that. To, we're just kind of. I'm actually. I have nothing to do for the next four days. Boom. Or I guess three days. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm free until Thursday night. Boom. So, three. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll figure something out. I have no idea. We don't really have I, a plan. We just kind of. I have two videos it. to make, but apart from that, I'm doing nothing. Yeah. So guys, right. uh, check out Terry's channel. Check out check out Kent's channel. Um, if you like Marvel Legends, he's your guy. Uh, out there. So as far as uh, upcoming videos for me this week, uh, I actually have a Funko Pop video coming tomorrow, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then I've got uh, some other stuff that I can't really talk about. But Terry, you got anything coming up this week? Plan? I am currently working on a uh, video for two characters, for two figures that are kind of visible in the background back here behind me. Um, not sure if you can make out who they are, but they're kind of neon, kind of techy, and kind of iron. Um, <laughs> that, was yeah. very, uh, that was like a so Darth I'll be, Maul, I'll, that's, like... that's a project that I've got working on for Sideshow. That's not going to be on my channel. For my channel, I just got something new in from Star Ace this week. So I'm going to be taking a look at a Star Ace six scale figure this week and possibly doing a round of photography with another one of their um, Defo real figures uh, from, um, from Lord of the Rings. Nice. 
So that's, uh, yeah, that's fun. That's something. There you go. Well, that's yeah. all I got. So, um, yeah, until next time, guys. We have spoken. See ya.